going to draw this pretty diagram like we had last time. You guys remember when we did NAT, right? So we had our, here's the internet. We'll draw a little cloud here. This is the internet. That might not, ah, that's plenty big. All right. And then we had our NAT router here. All right. And we remember things like if I have a, there's my web server. You guys remember that? And what does it take to get my web server to go? Someone here in the peanut gallery, can you guys answer? If I want my web server to be able to respond to requests from the internet, what do I need to do? Do you all remember that? From the very last thing we talked about last week. Nobody ever brings our notes or has them. What do I need to do on my router? I did ask a question. Oh. The question is, what should I do on my NAT router, or what do I have to do in order to make it so people from the internet can get to my web server? I have to do port forwarding. Very good. So I need port, oops, port forwarding to allow outsiders access to inside resources. Okay? Now, we're going to start talking about security. So here we are go with security. The way that helps us with security is basically unless you're set up with port forwarding, you are completely invisible or almost invisible. We'll talk about a few ways they can get in from the outside. In invisible. In visible. Okay? So if you have no port forwarding, your network is invisible. That's a great idea. So here's an example. Ripped from the headlines. All right. They have a baby monitor. You guys have seen a baby monitor. It has like a little loop on it. It has a little feed on it. And then it's like a speaker. We'll make it look like a speaker. That looks great. I'm awesome at this. Okay, so this is a baby monitor. Okay. I can put one of these on my network. Okay. I can use either my wireless connection. So you guys know our NAT router might have wireless. And let's just for a minute say this is wireless. All right. So the baby monitor will allow using a web connection will allow web connections, allows web connections to hear the baby. Okay. So this is great. So when I'm on my computer here, I can then connect to the baby monitor and listen to the baby, okay? So the baby says, wah. And then while I'm working, I can know the baby's crying and it's time to go get the baby and give it a bottle or whatever. Are we good with this? That seems like a great feature, rather useful. Now, if you had one of these, the next thing you're going to say is, can I monitor my baby from work? Okay. At work, I have a web browser, just the same here. Why couldn't I come up here and connect to my baby monitor from work? Does that sound like a great idea? Is that a possible feature you could add? Why, yes, it is. Unfortunately, there's a thing called universal. I'm just going to put universal plug and play. I think it's capital P, little n. I think it looks like this. U-P-N-P. -P. If you have U-P-N-P -P enabled on your router, this will automatically port forward. Okay? So we'll put a new color on here. I got my orange one still. 
what will happen then is when I connect my baby monitor to the network, it'll send a little message to the NAT to put in a port forwarding entry. Does that sound good? And it does it automatically. That's really cool. So it would say port 80 and then it would go to the baby monitor. I'll just put baby. Okay. So it'll go to that baby monitor. That's what we did last time. You guys remember port forwarding? And this happens automatically. And I'll just note here we'll say very convenient baby monitoring. All right, does this also seem like a great idea to help people out with their baby? So now I can be at work and I might want to, you know, listen to my baby from work. My router automatically took the connection from the baby monitor and opened up the connection. Now here's another feature. So my next feature might be, well shoot, I'm at work. Why don't I allow me to talk to the baby? That seems like a great idea, doesn't it? Because once we're on the internet, and it would have made sense here too that I should be able to talk into it and be like, hey baby, quiet down, I'll be right there, right? So now we're at work and we might want to say, hello, baby. Calm down. I got to quit looking at the monitor because there's so much latency. Hey, baby, calm down. And then the baby will hear it. Doesn't that sound great? So what happens is the baby monitor people set this all up for everyone and they sold all sorts of baby monitors. Okay? And everyone lived happily ever after, right? No. No. So one day someone hooked up their baby monitor to their thing and they listened to their baby at work and they did all the stuff. And one day they happened to be in the baby's room and they all of a sudden heard someone say, hey, you bleepity bleep bleep, I'll draw the stuff, blah. What do you put an at sign, exclamation mark. So there's all this bleepity bleep bleep coming out of the baby monitor. Now here's the problem, right? How did someone get into my baby monitor? And that's exactly a feature. The feature is now a bug, right? So what's happened now, we've made it so people on the internet can access the baby monitor so they can listen and talk to their baby. But what if some naughty other bad person wants to do the same thing? And sure enough, they did. Okay? That's a lovely security problem, isn't it? So that was a fun one. Okay? By the way, the main problem here was Baby monitor people, people that make baby monitors, they don't know anything about security. And you all don't either, okay? And even after we talk about this, I want you to remember, even I don't know that much about security. All I know is I need to call a professional because here's all the bad things that can happen. So here's one of the easy ones. Someone hacks into your baby monitor and 